Hi everybody! Recently, we created a shader that simulated an analog clock using polar coordinates and will stick with this type of display a little longer. This time, I'll demonstrate how to program a fully customizable spinner based on similar principles. So, let's start coding! You might be wondering what's the point of writing a shader to simulate something that can easily be replaced with a simple texture, which we can then rotate using code in our game. There is some truth to that. For a simple rotating circle, it probably wouldn't make much sense. However, our solution will be much more flexible, and in addition, it can be seen as a guide on how to further improve such a shader to do exactly what we require. So let's get to work. Once again, I'm creating a new scene where I'll add a color act, set some parameters for it, and assign a shader material for uh, with the new shader. So right-clicking, create new scene. I'll call it spinner. Okay. Right-click root node, add child node color act. And in the layout section, let's put the usual coordinates, I mean dimensions, 600 by 400. And scrolling down in the material section, let's create new shader material, click and create new shader, which I'll call spinner GD shader of the canvas item type and put it to the shaders folder. OK, create and click again to open it in the editor. Very well. And as always, uh, I'll delete all the unnecessary code that Godot generated for us using the templates. So we don't need vertex and we don't need light. OK, as I mentioned at the beginning, we'll be, uh, we are basing this on a tutorial for creating analog clocks, from which we'll copy the macro for easier use of the smooth step function, like this. I'm putting it right here. So hash define as e uh, with parameter size and value, and the definition is smooth step function with parameters size for the first edge, size plus uh, 0.001 for the second edge and value for the value. And uh, once again, we'll start by defining the uniform parameters that we'll need. First, as always, it's the resolution for aspect ratio recalculation, then speed to control the rotation speed of the spinner, and finally values for the outer and inner circles so we can set the desired shape. Let's put it here. Uniform Vec2 resolution is Vec2 a Vec2 yeah 600 by 400 okay then uniform float speed uh, in range in the initial value for example 0.5 and let's make the range from 0 to 1 with 0 0.01 as the step and the dimensions of our ring so it would be uniform float outer for the outer circle with the hint range and 0.6 at the initial value and again from 0 to 1 and 0 0.01 as the step and finally a uniform float inner hint range and point no eight point uh, yeah point eight sure okay and zero one point zero one Great. So we have uh, the parameters. Let's continue in the fragment function. Those who regularly follow my tutorials surely know that now we will shift the origin of coordinates to the center, recalculate the aspect ratio and set the time parameter using the internal time value and the speed parameter. So let's do it. Right here, uh, vector 2 uv is uv minus... <laughs> minus 
0.5, shifting the origin, then uvx is multiplied by resolution x divided by resolution y, aspect ratio, and finally uh, float time is internal time times speed. Great. So it's time to display something. As we also tested when writing the shader for the analog clock, we'll create a ring using the difference between two smooth step functions, like this. Okay, float circle, let's call it circle, is first smooth step function as e outer value and one minus length uv. This was in details uh, explained in the analog clock uh, shader tutorial. So if you are, if you wonder why we use just one minus this, uh, watch that video and it should be it should be pretty clear. And minus as e inner and again one minus length uv uh, one. Sorry. UV. Okay, and we'll also need a color, which we'll use for the final effect. We'll add it as another uniform parameter. Uniform vector for color, source color to display the color picker, and let's start at uh, one. The white color. All right, and we'll add the code to display using this color. Vector four result, as we are supposed to build it using some other functions, is color times circle, and finally, and finally, let's assign it to the internal variable color. Color is a result. Okay, so we should have the basics now, and it's time to improve it. First, uh, we'd like the color uh, to gradually darken around the circle. We'll achieve this by calculating the corresponding angle by converting UV coordinates to polar coordinates, which we also know from the analog clock. The result is divided by the value of tau, which is twice pi, representing the angle for a full circle. And then we apply the fract function to get a value in the range from 0 to 1. We then multiply this by the previous result. So let's do everything I was just saying right here. Okay, so float angle is a ton is a ton uv y uv x which is a known formula for, to convert from cartesian to polar coordinates and the result would be this color times circle times fract of angle divided by tau Okay, all right. Now we also want it to rotate at the set speed. So let's subtract the value of time from the argument. And simply right here, minus time. Okay, and the basic spinner is done. We can now try changing the color and other parameters. So here it is, shader parameters. So let's, for example, increase and decrease the outer so it's increasing or let's do something with inner now it's much thinner and what if we change the color to something like violet or blue anything we want looks pretty cool okay let's get back revert everything to default values and uh, i think just to prevent this perpetual motion from distracting us let's set the speed to zero Okay, but at the beginning, I showed the spinner with stripes, which might have looked a bit better. So let's do it. And first we'll add uniform parameters for their definition right here. Uniform float 
tribe count with a hint range and let's start at 60 stripes and I think the reasonable minimum is 6 and we can go up to 100 and of course the step would be 1. This is the first one, then a uniform fold stripe size with another hint range and let's start at point 9. It would be from 0 to 1 with a step point 0 1. And finally uniform float stripe edge with a hint range and the value default value point 1. And again from 0 to 1 and the step point 0 1. Okay, so the stripe count, the first one, uh, simply defines the number of stripes around the circle. And the other two, stripe size and stripe edge, control their appearance. Now, we'll use them in the code. Essentially, we'll create a race around the circumference of the circle and multiply them by the previous result. So the gaps between the rays will erase those parts from the spinner, leaving only the stripes. Let's first take a look at how the rays themselves look. OK, I'll put it here. And the result is smooth step. By the way, this is the code from the analog uh, clock shader as well. Stripe size. Stripe size, uh, size plus stripe edge. And the argument is absolute value of cosine of uh, angle divided by tau, which is multiplied by pi and multiplied by the stripe count. Okay, and this must be multiplied by the color as well. Here we go. Uh, as I said, we are using the same technique as for the hour and minute marks on the analog clock. If you're interested in a more detailed explanation of the formulas used, especially these absolute values and trigonometric functions, I definitely recommend watching the mentioned tutorial, which I will link in the description. All right, now instead of replacing the previous result, like this is replaced by this one. We will perform the multiplication. Let's just use this multiplied by. And here we go. We have the result. We can now start a spinner again and watch how it changes based on the parameters starting. OK, so what can we change? We can again change the dimensions. We can work with this. We can change the stripe count. Let's make it 100 or let's make it only 6. This is interesting, an interesting spinner as well. Changing the stripe size so now it's thicker and the edge to further, uh, further shape them. I think there are many possibilities to choose from. Let's get back to the default values. And if we want to keep the option to switch between a solid and a striped spinner, we can add the final parameter. I'll do it here, a uniform boolean, so it's bool, solid, let's make it a true, <laughs> as the default value, and use it in the code. So simply only if this is, no, if it is not solid, Let's create the stripes. And it's here. Okay, tabulator. So now it is uh, it is set to solid. If we turn it off in the inspector, we got the sprites uh, stripes. <laughs> okay, on and off. It works fine. Thank you very much for watching. 
and I hope you find this shader useful despite its simplicity. It could definitely be further improved, for example, by changing the color based on the angle, which could create interesting rainbow effects, or tracing more complex curves and generally performing various transformations that would be very difficult to achieve with a regular sprite. But that's probably up to each developer to decide which direction to take. For now, thank you once again, take care, good luck with your projects, and I'll see you in the next video.